And it's here where we really need to remember that hydrogen is always covalently bonded to something. And um, when we wrote H plus in previous parts of um, chemistry, that that was a simplification. So hydrogen is always covalently bonded to something. And now we will talk about hydrogen bonding as our next intermolecular force. That means it's gonna involve two separate molecules in this case. And we wanna be very specific about what hydrogen bonding is. So I've given us very, um, hopefully, uh, useful definitions. So when a small, very electronegative atom, nitrogen, oxygen, or fluorine only, is covalently bonded to hydrogen, it strongly pulls the bonding electrons toward itself to become a relatively large partial negative charge. Because hydrogen has no other electrons when its electron is pulled away, the nucleus becomes deshielded, exposing the hydrogen proton, or what's left of hydrogen, to become a relatively large par partial charge. And then the attraction between these on different molecules is a very strong version of dipole-dipole forces that we call hydrogen bonding. So each pair of non-bonding electrons on the nitrogen, oxygen, or fluorine atom can attract an H. So N usually has one pair of non-bonding electrons. It will form one hydrogen bond to that pair of electrons. Oxygen has two pairs, it will form two hydrogen bonds. Fluorine has three pairs of non-bonding electrons and will form three hydrogen bonds, as we'll see. Now, uh, is a hydrogen bond a true bond, like ionic or covalent bonds? Uh, the first thing I'll write is no. with an exclamation point, maybe two, maybe three. So it is not a type of bond. Chemists do not consider it a bond in general. And uh, we will talk about why it's called hydrogen bonding in a minute. Um, and uh, now let's look at the strength of the types of bonds that we've talked about so far. Ionic bonds typically between, as a minimum, 500 but all the way up to 5,000. Kilojoules per mole for a mole of ionic bonds, say in sodium chloride or calcium oxide. Covalent bonds on the other hand, typically between 100 to 900 kilojoules per mole. And so one trend is that typically ionic uh, bonds are stronger than covalent bonds, um, though uh, be careful with that sometimes. And then the strength of a hydrogen bond, bond with air quotes around it, I would say typically two to four kilojoules per mole. So much weaker. It is a strong version of dipole-dipole forces. However, if you look at uh, a tiny, tiny section of DNA with guanine and cytosine, and so this is base pair with one, two, three hydrogen bonds between them. You can see that if you get enough of these hydrogen bonds at two to four kilojoules per mole and uh, in say DNA, you have hundreds, thousands even, of uh, these types of hydrogen bonds that a hundred thousand, hundreds or thousands add up to uh, significant energies, energies that allow hydrogen bonds to hold DNA in its double helix. So um, I would say in a working sense, hydrogen bonds do help DNA to hold its shape. but not because they're super strong bonds, they're not bonds, they're strong intermolecular forces, strong dipole-dipole forces, 
but you get enough of them together and you can hold together DNA. Okay, now let's draw a picture of hydrogen bonds and we'll do an example for uh, one water molecule hydrogen bonded to as many other wa uh, water molecules as it can take. So this is typically going to require you to draw water in its proper geometry. Uh, it helps me anyway. And now, so this is going to be our one water molecule. Uh, let's do that. That should be underlined in black. And then we're going to draw hydrogen bonds to other water molecules in green. The way this works is, you. so we have an H and an O covalently bonded together. That's a large dipole that's going to pull these shared electrons away from hydrogen toward oxygen, creating a relatively uh, large partial positive charge. So each hydrogen will covalently, or sorry, will hydrogen bond with a pair of electrons on a neighboring oxygen uh, on a different molecule and each oxygen will hydrogen bond with an H on a neighboring molecule. So I'll draw the other two in here. There. So each water molecule can form a max of four hydrogen bonds. And to form a hydrogen bond, one of the molecules has to have oxygen, nitrogen, or fluorine with a pair of non-binding electrons. So A, one molecule, must have oxygen, nitrogen, or fluorine with a pair of electrons, non-binding electrons, which they almost always do. So if you have an oxygen, it typically will have two pairs of non-bonding electrons. But the other thing you have to have is you have to have the other molecule must have hydrogen covalently bonded to oxygen, nitrogen, or fluorine. You have to have both of these for hydrogen bond to occur. And it's uh, there are several questions we'll ask about when can hydrogen bonds form and when can they not form. And so that's uh, the focus of this next question. Um, can acetone form hydrogen bonds with other acetone molecules? If so, draw it. And if not, state why not. Well, let me draw you an acetone molecule. It's got three carbons. It's got six hydrogens, but none of those hydrogens are covalently bonded to O, N, or F. So even though acetone has uh, oxygen, nitrogen, fluorine, it has oxygen with a pair of non-bonding electrons, So check, 
It does not have hydrogen covalently bonded to O and RF. And our conclusion is one acetone molecule cannot form hydrogen bonds with another acetone molecule. So if the question were, for acetone, what types of intermolecular forces does it have? Well, of course, everything has LDF. As we've already mentioned, it does have dipole-dipole forces. Oop, dipole-dipole forces. But acetone does not have H bonding or hydrogen bonding. Dipole-dipole forces are its strongest type of intermolecular force. These carbon-hydrogen bonds, these over here, they cannot participate in hydrogen bonds. They are not polar enough. They don't have a big enough dipole. However you remember it, do not draw hydrogen bonds to hydrogens covalently bonded to H. Now the next question we want to ask is, can acetone form hydrogen bonds with water molecules? If so, draw as many possible hydrogen bonds as possible. If not, state why not. Well, we'll draw our acetone molecule again. And on homework or an exam, you'd probably be given this copy. And then ask to draw hydrogen bonding to it. So uh, in this particular case, we have acetone with uh, an oxygen with a two pairs of electrons and water does have hydrogen covalently bonded to oxygens therefore the answer is yes covalent bond or hydrogen bonds can occur and now we'll draw both of the possibilities those are the only two hydrogen bonds that it can occur for this, from acetone to water. 